Gardens. My name is Danny. It is a beautiful January day here in Central Florida, Zone 9B, 10A. I am actually in our front Florida native section of the garden. So just so some of you know, we're in an actual residential neighborhood. Um, so if you see cars, you know, or people talking, that's what's going on. Uh, we really do just live in a regular old neighborhood, y'all. Um, our lot is 7,200 square feet, and that includes the imprint of our house. And our house isn't that big, but it gives you an idea. So today, I wanted to talk to you about native edible plants. That's one of my absolute favorite subjects. I love native edible plants. Not everybody is keen on native edible plants as far as like eating them is concerned. Some people think they're not at all tasty. And I don't disagree that some of them, they're zombie apocalypse food, as I like to call it. If you're out in the middle of, you know, the woods and you're stuck with nothing else to eat and you know what you're eating, they're not that bad. <laughs> they're really not that bad. So, but this one I think is actually quite tasty. So this is marlberry. This is Ardesia esculenin, es Ardesia esculenoides. I can never pronounce that correctly. It's quite a mouthful. Um, but this is a Central Florida, South Florida, West Indies, Caribbean plant. That's kind of the range. This is probably pretty far north for their range. They are common in hammocks, coastal strands, uh, pine rocklands. That's kind of their, their habitat. So they are a columnar shrub or like a dooryard kind of a small specimen tree. They get to be about eight to 15 feet tall. Here in our area in South Florida, they can get upwards of 20 feet. So they are evergreen. They can handle shade. That is one of the reasons why I love them so much is because it's quite shady over here on the west side of our house. These are rock stars over here and they absolutely look gorgeous. They flower, they fruit profusely. This particular baby is just loaded with fruit right now. So the pollinators go crazy for the very fragrant white flowers that come out. And then the birds just love the fruit. Now, they generally like the berries when I've noticed they like the berries when they're a little more ripe and mealy. I like them when they're like this. They're just a little tart right now. So I just want to kind of give you an idea, if I can, of what they taste like. So they're, they're not very big. They're really, they're really quite small, but, and there's not much to them. There's not much pulp there. There's a lot of steed, <laughs> but, I don't know, it's one of those fruit, and I, I always don't, I never like this when people, well, it tastes like what it tastes like. It tastes like itself, but I get kind of a current blackberry-ish, I guess, kind of a flavor. They're hard to describe. They really do just kind of have their own thing going on, but they're not, as I pull food out of my mouth, they're not, you know, they're not terrible. I think they're good. I generally don't eat these too much because I want, oh, kestrel, American kestrel. So I try not to, you know, eat them because they're for the birds. That's why I plant them here. They're excellent, excellent bird plants. Um, if you want to support your local birds, put in Florida native edible plants. So this is the seed. They're really, really quite large compared to the you know the fruit there's not a lot of pulp there but it's you know it's a fantastic you know landscape plant um, like i said either as a specimen like a small specimen tree or as a backdrop or in like i said in a shady environment they are just you know fantastic plants you can get these at my favorite local native plant nursery if you live in the tampa bay area that's going to be wilcox nursery and landscape and I will leave a link to the um, to Wilcox in the description below. Now I'm going to be doing a whole series 
on Florida native edible plants. As I said, that's one of my favorite subjects because um, there are so many and we have quite a few in the yard here. So there's Maypop, which produces passion fruit, uh, which is a little more tart than say like a, a purple possum passion, but still very delicious. It's also a host plant. There's um, cocoa plums, which are delicious. There's also wing sumac, which you can make like a kind of a lemonade type drink out of. So I'll be highlighting each one of those as they, as their fruit comes available so that I can actually show you the fruit and you know, show you what it tastes like. So stay tuned for those edible native plant videos. And also if you live in the Tampa Bay area and you were looking for some on-site gardening advice, please send me an email. I give free on-site gardening advice. If you're interested in the type of native edible food forest type, you know, plantings that you see here on our channel, hit me up if you live in this area and uh, we can set up a time for you to come out and you know, give you a hand. And also, I'm a naturalist and I also give nature walks in our local Tampa Bay area parks. So eco-literacy, as I've mentioned in other videos, is very important to me. So I give them away completely for free. My gardening advice, on-site gardening advice, my nature walks, they are completely free. I have had people donate, which is so lovely. Thank you so much. It's not absolutely necessary, but I'm not gonna, you know, turn down your generosity if you feel so inclined. But yeah, send me an email if you have a homeschool group or a church group or a corporate group or, you know, whatever group you happen to have, or it's just a family, you know, thing or a couple that would just like to learn more about nature. Send me an email and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go out and have some fun together in the woods. If you like this kind of content, if you're interested in edible natives or having a food forest or, you know, gardening for wildlife, give us a like, hit subscribe. And I hope to see you again on Peaceful Bird Gardens. Have a lovely afternoon.